Hey everybody, now I told you guys I was going to make another vlog video after I made the one I did before. It took me a little while to try to upload it and it was like kind of long. But, I'm back, so here you go. Now before I get started, I just want to get some shouts from people who support me. Big Butt 765 unique username. Um, Mileboard Contest who actually invited me to, to join their website. Um, I actually will, I will join, actually I've actually signed up on a few Steam website but I haven't posted my videos on there in like forever. I still need to do that. I always forget about doing it and I still need to do it. But I will smile board content. I'm I'm gonna check the website one of these days. And Sonic two five 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 zero who left a nice comment who left a nice comment on one of my videos. These people out, add them as friends, subscribe, the URLs are in the description box down below. Thank you. Um a while back I was sent a movie by the film by the feature films for family. It was a DVD with two movies on it. It was Who's the Boy and Just in Time. That. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, my screen is acting a little weird. My mom has been acting a little lately. I think one of these days, and I. Oh, I'll only say I'll just keep using it, and I, just bear with me. Anyway, two movies on there Who Stole My Boy and Just Time. They're free to also family movies. And I kind of, kind of, I bought, got it, and I kind of put it off watching it, because they said try to watch it in the next two weeks. I never watched it in the next two weeks. I was kind of busy. And so, um, they called me because they said they were going to call me. And so I picked up the phone and they um, said, it's a, you know, it's okay that I didn't watch them, but try to watch them this weekend. So I did. And I, I, I remember saying that I was going to, when I watched it, I was going to tell you guys what I thought. So, here I go. Now I know the video actually says Who's My Voice Just In Time in that order. I'm actually going to review Just In Time first and then Who Stole My Voice. So, just in time. Now this movie is basically about um, this man named Michael. Now, now I do not remember the actor's names. I don't have. I don't. I don't. Like how do these have like the track list? The, the track. The cast list things or IMDb or something. I can't find them anywhere. So bear with me. So I'll just reference by name. I just won't say the actor things. Anyway, the character's name is Michael. Who. As I guess the successful toy manufacturer has a young daughter named Louie, has a brother who originally worked um, at the, the toy place, had a has an executive named Brenda who kind of is being on him, but we find out there's a, more to it than that, but whatever. And apparently, and it's supposed to be all perfect, however it's not, because his wife died, his wife died in a car accident. Dun dun dun! Now, like, his life was so-called, was perfect until his wife died in a car accident. Um, condolences. So anyway, he's, he's kind of depressed a little bit. Well, he's not depressed, but he kind of, I guess, loses track of what's important in, what, in his life. And, 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 he, um, to replace, or, I guess I'm to replace mother, but she needs, he needs someone to look after his daughter because he's working. So he hired, so he has a nanny that he hired, who's, in short words, a bad bitch. And one, and one day, he leaves her alone with the daughter. She tries to cook, but ends up burning, not burning the house down, but almost burning the house down, this one room. And the nanny's fed up with it. She walks down, storms out. And so, this means he has to hire a new, he hi wants to hire a new nanny. Enter Faith, who, um, Lily meets earlier at, cause at the restaurant where she works, cause Faith caught Lily being bullied by, being bullied by someone. She saved her, and, and so they they got a friendship. And so one and so one day when they were hiring nannies, she comes in, cause they hired a bunch of them, and they um don't they don't like them, they don't understand English, whatever. Um, yes, they do actually interview one that doesn't understand English. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, she walks in. The daughter was best friends with her, so she loves her. The the brother, I guess, I guess thinks she's hot, so she likes her. I think she actually is quite attractive. May I say, by the rest. Um, she ends up being hired, and they, she, I guess it's supposed to be strictly business between them, but but then, of course, there's, once again, there's more to it than that. As as you'll see in the movie. Now, actually, I thought this was a sweet movie. I thought it was nice. I thought the acting was good. I, I will say there's one thing. There's a scene where um the girl 
because it's like nutrition day at her school and she has to dress up like a vegetable and this this bitch girl like comes up to her like dressed up in like all grapes and stuff and she said just to like Lily, well, my cousin better than yours or something or blah blah blah. My mom helped me make it or something, and it's like your mom didn't help you make it because she's dead. And I guess it hits her or something like that. We don't really know because they never specify it. I guess so. Cause like, but then we cut a few minutes later to Lily being back at her house, my and the, her father talking to her, and he's like, you know what you do these times, you just ignore it. I'm like. Dude, this little bitch talks back about Lily's mother, her dead mother nonetheless. I'm sure she's pretty sad about her mother dying. If she said as far as Lily not and she said that to me, I would clock her side of the cheek too. I mean, I'm like, dude, no. No. That's not, not good. Not good at all. And also, this, um, there's a scene where, um, where Michael takes Brenna to the petting zoo and invites Lily and, no, actually, actually, Lily and Faith and, my going to Paris too, and she invites Brenda to come along. And the score playing that is kind of corny, kind of pretty stupid. But overall, it's a good movie. It's good for the family. Um, the acting was good. The little girl is actually really good in this. Um, she and she has the scene where she's like, um, like t asking her um father, why is are my mother leave me? Like where when like where is she? And like it, it didn't be probably actually it is kind of heartbreaking. You know she's. She, she's really good. She's actually was really good in the movie. My uh, the guy who played Michael is good too, and the guy the actor who played Faith, she was she, she was good too. Like I like how um also this woman Faith I forgot to say, she is wants to be a teacher. She's like a college student or yeah college student, and she broke up with this guy named Richie, and <laughs> who's like in this real like obsessed with her or whatever and. And like, like goes up to like Michael one day and like, hey, if you touch my wife, I'm gonna like smack you, capiche? I'm Italian stereotype. R, me, pepperoni pizza. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to mock the Italian. Italians are awesome. But I'm saying, like, it's kind, of, it's kind of like, uh, okay, what did, where, what city more did, not city more. This joke is confused. Joke aborted. Um, but yeah, it's a good it's a good movie. Acting was good. But well, back to what I was gonna say. Just give up. I was gonna say, Faith. I think I like the, her character. Like she's not like she doesn't let anyone control her. She's she's up there. She's smart. She's independent. She doesn't put up with crap like that. Like how she's she's quirky. And she's uh, in the beginning, Mike's kind of a little of an asshole towards her. And she's like she doesn't like bow her down. She she's quirky. She, like uses her quirky sense of humor like kind of lighten the situation and I and I enjoyed that anyway it's a good movie good overall and I, I also I will say one thing it does end with a happy ending which I, well, actually it you may think it does but you also may think it doesn't because it's kind of one of those endings where it doesn't sit flat out it just kind of makes you question if it did or not so and I, I appreciate that I like how it had the guts to not go with the stereotypical happy ending so it was a good movie. I give it three stars. I say check it out if you like. If you like creature films for families, if you like it. If you don't, it maybe a little corny to you, but I liked it. Okay, now on to the next film. Uh, who stole my voice? Or actually, it's also called in some places Who Gets the House? And it's basically this one's a different movie. It's about two parents named. I know one of them is Elijah Cuthbert. Cuthbert. Um, this one guy I can't remember his name. Try to look him up right. Now I should have, I should have done this earlier. I mean, did I open the page? Oh, and it's right there. I, sh I didn't have to search all. So, the wife's name is Elijah Cuthbert. There's not too many big names in here, but Elijah Cuthbert plays the mother in this name, um, Emily, Emily Reese. And, wait, wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. So Sophie Lorraine plays Rebecca Reese. Um, Ricky Mabe is Brian Reese. Ryan Reese, why did I say this? Carl Merritt and Sophie Lorraine are Don and Rebecca Reese. They're two parents. And the kids who are played by Elijah Cuthbert, Emily, Ricky Mabe as Brian, uh, Emma Taylor Isherwood, 
and Ellie Taylor ushered as Heidi and Amy who are the kids, three daughters and son. Um, they kind of noticed, I, they kind of noticed, well, actually they don't notice, but their friend played by this, well, this girl, Batuma Kayembe, who, that's actually an African name, it's not Asian, um, kind of notices that the parents are acting strangely. And like she tells the, her friend, that friend, um, Emily, that like, I don't know, dude, it sound, looks like your parents are, don't love each other anymore. And she's like, ah, no. And she's like, dude, they're not speaking to each other, they're not looking at each other, you can't get them together. Basically, they don't love each other. And she's like, oh, they're just busy and stuff, which is kind of weird. I don't know why busy business would get in the way of someone saying that they love you or something. But, what, but that's beside the point. Anyway, um, they don't believe it. So, um, the best friend bet, makes a bet with Emily saying to try to get them both together at uh, at Emily's audition for a play. And so they end up getting them together. But that kind of proves to be a little bit of a disaster. And and I think that's when Emily realizes, yeah, you know, I guess my parents really don't love each other anymore. And her, the best friend Jennifer gives her a, a legal form where apparently if they separate, which they say they separate, um, the kids get the house and the parents have to alternate living in it. I guess it must be like some sort of um, helpful thing or something like that. I don't know. So, so the parents they all thought, well, we're we're separating, it's not a divorce, but we just need time to think things out. And so, she, Emily gives them the form that Jennifer gave to her. And so, she, and they're like, you know, it's the way, blah 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 blah. So, and so the parents sign it, and then so then there's that problem. But then they have to kind of, I guess try to find out a way to get them back together until they use this voice changing apparatus. Okay, but I'm, not, I'm telling this plot to you, my brain was already going, chocolate rain. And I, like, even saying it, I was like, dude, shut up. Don't, just stop telling them. It doesn't matter. It's not a horrible movie. It's not a crap fest. But it's not a good movie. It, it's, a, it's a really decent movie. It's not great by any standards. Um, but more than one thing's premise. Oh my gosh. Where do I start with this premise? This, I just can't, this is real quick, will you? Okay. First of all, what parallel universe would ever create a, a, any agreement that says if a parent separates, a kid gets a house? What, 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 who came with, why would you get funding for that? Like, that's like a super to stay home the ugly from the garbage pail kids movie, except well, this movie has ambition. That was... Ugh. Don't... Ugh. Don't... Don't... Get out of your head. Get out of your head. I just thought of it again. Okay. So, back to this movie. Where would you do this? Where would... Like... Where would... I... How would you... I don't even know how to say it. Like, how would you? How 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 would that even give be even made? I mean, it's it's so stupid. Like, how? Like, okay. Now the document's made. Second of all, since the kids own the house, wouldn't they have to pay for the taxes and everything? Okay. Part A, they're minors. So I don't know how this would get by because they I don't think minors can pay taxes. I believe at least. And B, I don't think they work. I honestly believe, I honestly doubt they're really working children. I mean, they maybe they get an allowance, but I highly doubt they're like working children. How would they even come up with money to pay for the bills, taxes, everything if they own the house? But that's the matter. They don't even bring up that plot line much anymore. And much, it's just kind of like they okay, they own the house, but it's not important right now. Like, and also. They say, like, this is the only thing to do, like, like in order for the parents to start communicating or something, or w whatever, this is, like, the first step, because, like, the, even the kid, he's the, the brother, he's like, well, we should not be the ones to pack our bags, just because you are funny, I'm like, 
It's called the Life Sucks Dumbass. Deal with it. Okay. I highly doubt that'll be one, like, to, like, like I said, just deal with it. Life sucks. Get over it. But don't resort to paying a house that you can't even pay for yourself. I highly doubt it. I mean, I'm sure you can avoid this little stupid voice changing thing, but I highly doubt you can afford taxes. Even I can't afford tax. Well, actually, I don't say even I, because I don't pay bills or do any of that. I, okay, if I can't afford taxes, I highly doubt you could. But that's beside the point. I, I'm actually just going on. I'm, I'm bringing logic to this plot. Okay, all on the side, okay. Now we get to this voice changing apparatus. Okay, why do we even need this in the first place? Can't, is it possible for these two guys, the be parents, to suck up any problems they have and just have an honest conversation with each other? Like, they have therapy. Why can't they just sit down with each other? Like, okay, they, they each go to a different therapist, but don't they need tell the, at least don't they, like, tell the parents that try talking with, with each other or something? Like, I, I don't, like, why would you need the voice changing apparatus? And then, like, this whole thing, okay, we could have just, like, got there and maybe made the plot about, maybe, maybe them trying to change the voice like that. But no, they have to do this, like, this whole thing about, oh, he's doing it for the science fair, and then he becomes famous or something, which is perfectly kind of ludicrous. Okay, first of all, if he bought the th thing, if he didn't even, like, pay for the, make the thing, he just bought it from a magazine, how would he get big off of something? Well, actually, I guess he didn't technically get big off that. He got big off the experiment. But wouldn't, like, the... Shouldn't, like, the makers of the voice changer be somewhat included in this? Possibly. I don't know how this works, but... Fine, whatever. Just... I... I don't... This... This... I don't even... This, this plot's just stupid, okay? This plot is stupid. This premise is just stupid. Like, it makes no sense. And, like, and, like that whole voice changing apparatus, we don't even get to that until, like, the last third of the movie. So, the first two thirds are just like, so, what do we do? Or is are there going to be a major plot point or something? Because there isn't. There really aren't many, any, any major plot points at all. And the kids, I'm sorry, they were, they were, all, they were all that great of an actresses. Uh, actors. I mean, I don't really want to say they're bad actors until I see them in something atrocious. But I don't even care if they're a, a kid movie. I mean, I can understand the two little girls maybe not being the little one. I can understand because she's maybe young. She doesn't really know any better. The kind of the old, the, the maybe second to second to youngest. Yeah, whatever. You know, whatever. But the teens, there's but the teenagers. There should be no excuse. I'm sure they can read scripts. I know they can act. I'm sure they can act. So aren't they? Like, they're so bland. Like, there's nothing really, like, special about them. Do you really care about the kids? Like, it's just like... Like, there's just nothing. And also, I forgot to mention, um... Actually, I'll do it later. To the credit, though, the parents... Actually, the adults actually give pretty good performance. Carl Marx, Sophia Lorraine, and George Decay. Yes, guys, I'm not joking you. George Decay, that he plays... Elliot, which I guess is supposed to be like either or like a, some living babysitter or like a nanny or a friend or carp or something. I don't know what he is, but I guess. But he has, he has I gave a pretty good performance. Like he plays this guy whose family died in like a car crash, or, crash or something. And and I, I thought he was a, he was a good. Although I will say one thing also. As the mother, we think was like a robot water water robots instructor ladies. We think it's like a class or something, but I guess apparently it's to do some weird pageant show swimming pool thing. And you're just like, what? Like, where, where's the, where did, like, where did this even come into play? Like, how did this, I, uh, like, it's, it's just stupid. And also, one thing, oh, this basic, oh my gosh. And like the it ends the way you think it is. It's a predictable movie. It ends the way it, it does. But it's almost ruined because there is a scene where he makes speech about how much he loves his wife. I don't know if that's fun or not, but whatever. And he 
I guess reclaim his love for. Okay, I'm sorry. Even if that was a spoiler, come on. It's it's a predictable movie. It's a it's a predictable movie. You know how it's gonna go down. But she says she she says something to him after that speech that makes you just go, what? Uh, heck, cause it's just like, dude, she just he just she said he said. Okay, I know I'm looking like I'm getting pissed off at this movie, but it's not a bad of a movie, it's a decent movie. Your kids might like it, I didn't care very much. It's a high two and a half star two and a half stars. I can't recommend it to everyone. It's I think actually probably my least favorite so far in the feature films for families. Um, that and Walking Across Egypt wasn't really too good. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it was like it it was like this. It was it was, it was a decent movie, but it just wasn't all that good. Well actually I actually managed to go pretty long once again. So now I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know down below. Have you seen this movie? But I'm sure there are not many people out there who have seen it, but by the slim chance you have seen did you like these movies? Did you not like them? Um, let me know. And also what's your favorite feature films for family movie? Like I said for me, I can't really pick one. I think it's either Balance for Babies or the Penny Promise. I don't know which one yeah, but I don't know. Well, that's pretty much it. See ya. Bye.